Hello, dear friends. Welcome to our online classes of Pedagogy 6000 or Education 3000. I am Noemi Paimal, and today we are going to share more tools. It's going to be the Practical Pedagogical Tools 3000, part two. And it's fun to have a lot of tools. Look at the first one. Yes, but still we are still with um, the video on bio-intelligent tools. We saw last time that bio-intelligent tools means a tool that's worked by itself, by themselves. It's easy to do. It's always fun and the kids almost they learn by themselves. The, the tool is teaching for you, basically. That's why it's called bio-intelligent. It's clever. This is on the slide we can see mud, to play with mud. I know the parents, they don't like it very much, but it's so much fun. It's very good to release emotions. It's very good for, it's, a, it's therapy. And it's, there is um, something with the mud, it's terroric energy, it's from the earth. It's, it's, it's very healthy, actually. Well, if you don't like it, it doesn't matter. We can always do ceramic, clay, do clay pot and play with the clay, and this is not so messy. Or you can do it with this, you know, it's, it's, um, hi, I don't know the name. It's, it's a machine and it goes around and you can do all the pots like that, or you can do it by hand. You can do some figures and then you cook them, you paint them, and you can do any, the, anything you want with the clay, any kind of art. The other one is yoga, yoga for kids. It can be yoga for, for kids. There is um, activities with cards and you can do the, all the movement with, according to the card you have. You can do yoga for kids with a story. You can do acro yoga. That's for the young people uh, where it's more acrobatic and you do all the yoga but you lift up. I mean, it's called acro yoga. It's uh, it, you lift up with your legs and you, you are doing the, the yoga on the legs of somebody. It's fun. I hope you understood. Uh, type, type a crow the, from acrobatic, a crow yoga or duplex. Yoga duplex is two persons doing yoga and it's fun too. We can mention capoeira. Capoeira is from Brazil. It's very good. It's very complete. It's um, music, it's be together, it's um, very cool movement, and it has a spirit to it. I really recommend capoeira and martial art. So martial art, when the kids, the, um, for the kids or for the, the young people, I would suggest the fast martial arts, which can be Aikido, Karate, Kung Fu, in taekwondo for the adults like the teachers the parents maybe something softer like tai chi or qigong that's very good you, you can really see the difference a kid that does martial art is more coordinated is more respectful to the tradition to the teacher to the companions to the peers and um, is open to multicultural things like you will know usually they know some chinese some japanese you know to count uh, they are more balanced, I would say. I would recommend any message you can see on the slides as well with water, any exercise with water. You know, we can do the exercise of um, Masaru Emoto, like talk to the water and see the difference. You can talk to the rice too. There is an exercise very nice. You cook the rice and you, you say rice, and this rice is going to be nice and uh, smell good for one month. Or you'd say bad things to the rice and the rice will turn black and it will smell bad. So it's so important for the kids to understand that. And anything with physical water too. And anything with ecology. Do some campaign with the ecology environment. Plant trees. I will recommend to plant like 100 trees per grade per year. You can have a convenient with the town hall, with the, whoever is in charge of your town, of your, of your village, of your community. 
have the small trees and with the help of everybody, with the neighbors and the neighbor community, the parents and the teachers and all the children to participate in uh, reforest the, the area and plant trees. And have, of course, your bio garden. The bio garden, if you don't have uh, enough place, you can have vertical, you know, on the wall, you can have all the plant. Or you can have um, in the pot, you can have your pot in a, inside the classroom and the plant are part of the classroom and you can do some, you can germinate, you know, the sprout. And the kids, they, they, they are with them and they are in charge of their plants. That's very important. Here on the slide, we can see other techniques. One is uh, relax. They like down on the floor and they relax. And there is some techniques with visualization and uh, tension, distension of the body. The other circle is a circle of visualization. So you, you tell a story and the kid, they, they go inside and they follow the story. Or the same kid, they can do the story or the visualization and they follow the peers they follow too. And according to the subject of what you want to do this week. The other slide is outside. We can do meditation outside or listen to the birds and do some connection with nature. It's very good as well. Other would be hugging. The other one is the pets. Yes, the deep and the low and simple them. Clown. But clown, not the clown before, like you always fall down and everybody make jokes of you and uh, they laugh of, I mean, it's not respectful. The, I would say the new kind of circus, a new kind of clown, where there is so much respect that is uh, more subtle. If not, they, they don't like it, the kids. Mm -hmm. Well, in general. And uh, puppets. Cook. Cook for boys and girls and watch the dishes boys and girls as well, and cooking is everything. It's love, it's social issues, it's art, it's physical, physics, gimmicks, math, proportion, equation, uh, what's the name of it? Fractions. <laughs> and it's very good. It's very important in their education. And to weave. It's very good. Remember to weave, it will help with this neurotransmitter transmitter called irisina, irisina, or irisin, irisin, And it's completely linked with the learning process. It's when you discover things, when you realize something, when you, oh, wow, I found something. It's linked, according to science, it's linked with a regular movement. It can, be, it can be to weave, to swim, to run, to walk. The five senses, so there is a lot of exercise to enhance the five senses. And this is very good from very little. So they can work on different textures. They can go through a piece of clothes and they can feel the, 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 the fabric, the, anything with the earring, touching, sight, taste, smell. Always nice stuff. Don't put paper and hot, I don't know, something terrible. It has to be nice, and then the, the senses get more subtle, and then there is a correlation. If you have your sense developed outside, it will develop the sense inside. It's extremely pedagogical. At night, go outside at night to camp. Yeah, to camp is extremely pedagogical and therapeutical and very good for social relationship for inter- personal intelligence. And the kids, I remember only that uh, when they go out, actually. Yeah, and if you can't camp outside because of the insurance and the whatever security problem you have with the school, maybe you can camp inside the school in the patio. And it's, it's, it's good too. It, it, it really changes the, the ambiance, the, the relationship, the atmosphere. There is beautiful. And you camp with them, of course, somewhere. <laughs> And uh, you spend a, a fun night, hopefully. <laughs> and they would remember that. Oh, they, they, and then they, you, we all do the breakfast and the director of the school would bring the breakfast. To the and uh, you can do wonderful things. I saw that in many schools. And when they do it, it's, they never regret, never. Go outside. The ideal situation would be go outside once a week at least in the town, the 
community to see something from real life every week. That would be the, the best. So do an, a research or have somebody talking about a special subject topic. Once a month, I would suggest do a trip inside the country to know somewhere else. And one, once a year to go outside of the country to do an international trips and maybe to do fair and some activities to raise the money so they learn fair economy by the, at the same time. And um, this is, uh, according to me, it's the most pedagogic, pedagogical thing to travel and to know things from first hand. And it would help with languages and it would help with social science. It would help with the future when they want to do something, they, they know how the, this world is working. And it's good for multi cultural approach and for peace culture. And this picture, these guys, they did a trek. It was a, oh my God, it was one week trekking. It was 60 kilometers, six zero. And we had to go to a pass. It was 5,000 meters. It was the Andes. And they did so well. I mean, those kids, they chant completely after this trek. I mean, there was a girl, she was kind of lazy. After that, she was so strong. She was so adamant. She was like, you know, when you have a strong will, something, I think, yes. She, she changed completely. She said there was another girl. Uh, yes, they were tired, but they were so proud because they did it. And it was very for stamina to be, to be um, when you have strong will, when you, you want to do things, it builds character in English. Yeah, it builds character. Thank you. Then um, again, go at night. Here you can see the, it was a visit of an archaeological place in Paraguay. And uh, it's good because at night you, you have to face a, a, um, darkness. And it's outside darkness, but it's your own fear as well. So it's very good to, for the pedag pedagogical process of a human being. And sometimes the kids, they, are, they don't know the night. And the night is half the... <laughs> the other half of the time. Or the other slide is uh, we were at the beach in Peru and uh, it was in circle and we had the fire and we had the wind and you have the sand and the earth and we had the water, it was by the sea, by the way. So all the elements were there and we can work with the five elements. So this element is ether and it's very good. It's very pedagogical. You know, the kids sometimes they are separated from bathing things like fire, air, touch the the, the Sand, the soil, the, the, the earth, the water. No, you're going to get wet. And so what? The, the, it's, it's very important. It's part of the, the planet. And they, they know how to take care of that after that, you see? And it's beautiful. And it was a beautiful night with many surprises. Um, to cook outside, this is part of the camping part. And there are architecture. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Archaeology. If you have the chance to go on the site, a real site of real archaeology and uh, talk with the archaeologist, the person working with archaeology, do some um, excavation with the expert, of course, it will make archaeology alive. It will make history alive. It will make remote history alive. See, uh, one, two pieces of advice. Don't go to battlefields because some sensitive kids, they can have a very bad time and not more. And don't go to a museum where the energy is very low and it's all dusty and old and old because it's so low that the kids, they, they don't like it at all. They prefer outside and do something active or a movie in that case, if you can't go to the field. After the biointelligence tools, we handle a set of tools and it's called biomorphic pedagogical tools. Biomorphic tools is completely different. It's, it, it has to do with intuitive intelligence. And uh, I don't recommend you to do too much. It's like five, 10 minutes. It's like, for instance, um, telepathy or to guess what's, it's more like energetic. Like you can have a box of um, little balls of colors, colorful balls. And then you close your eyes and you try to figure out which one is, you close your eyes and you figure out which one's a green ball and you take it out and say, oh, this is green. Or reverse, you can ask, pick up the red ball so they can feel, it's called DG sense or DG reading. It's reading through the skin. 
and they can figure out colors, they can figure, like here we can see they do cards. So, you know, when you pair up cards, it's called the memory game. But in that case, the cards, you don't guess. You feel this card has the same energy as this card and you flip over and they are the same. So it's not a guessing game, but it's called extra sensory perception game. I want to mention Dr. Shishida when he talks about the kid and um, this kind of biomorphic tools and capacities, I would say paranormal capacities or empathic intuitive capacities. Dr. Shishida said that years ago, he was talking about this. He was saying more than children reasoning as homo sapiens, and I do things the same as well. There are children whose sensitivity is so acute that they can perceive feelings, what one thinks, what you are going to ask, the atmosphere of a place, the past, the future, what is happening at the physical level, affective level, mental and astral level. And they are able to simultaneously work in all these levels. So that's open another array of tools. And that's why we call that biomorphic tools linked to extrasensory perception. And um, talking about that, it's good to take the children in places with a lot of negative ions. Negative ions are placed very, with very fresh air, very pure, when they can refresh their entire bodies. And I say bodies with an S, physical bodies, emotional bodies, intuitive bodies, spiritual bodies. And they can download all the little things that bother them and reload with very good fresh energy. And it's called places with a lot of negative ions, like a waterfall, beach, um, seaside, lake, non-polluted rivers. And uh, well, in that case, you know, the slide is a beautiful waterfall of Iwasu, Brazil. And then there is a third set of tools, it's called bio reconnection tools, which are a whole set of tools to reconnect with oneself. And in the seven petal school, this will correspond to the petal, the violet petal. And this all has to do with inner growth or inner development. For instance, anything like, it's always it's, it's, it's as well, it can be called self-knowledge or self-science. And I really like that. And it has to be part of education nowadays. It's very important to be fulfilled inside, to know who we are and why we are here. <laughs> it can include, for instance, active philosophy, cosmogenesis, universal geometry, energetic an anatomy, meta-languages, symbols, for instance, archetypes, Mayan calendar, universal laws, breathing exercise, mandala, relaxation exercise, awareness to the body, inner connection exercise, mindfulness. Mindfulness will definitely be here and it's a beautiful set of programs already set up for us. Any kind of yoga, remember I told you, uh, duo yoga or your yoga duplex, we can call this duplex, acro yoga, acrobatic yoga, martial art, Gaudiya dances. Gordier dances, it's very good if you have a chance to have that. We have a whole set of tools for peace culture. And we have a whole program called Schools and the Sea of Peace. I will do a video only on that. And you have the books in the internet on the website. And that's another array of beautiful tools to have peace inside, peace with others, peace inside the school, peace in the community, peace in the country, and peace in the world. Remember, education and peace culture goes together, and it, it works very well. Then we can have uh, silence as part of the bio-reconnection tools, moments of nothing is part of that, a moment of self-observation, observation of nature, but without anybody telling you, blah, 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 this is, this is, this is not just you observe and you decode what you see, what you feel. When so you watch a star, you decode that, but nobody should talk at that moment. It's a secret moment where the children and the young people, you know, by decode, they, 
the person was beyond all that. And it's got a level of uh, unloading or downloading of information and um, codified information of nature, for instance. It's beautiful. It's called a uh, conscious observation in silence. Then we have tools for babies. Don't forget the babies sometimes, oh, they're just babies, they don't need anything. Uh, 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 uh. Babies are extremely important. So six first months are crucial. I do recommend this book. It's called Continuum from Jean Lied Love. And it's beautiful. She said the baby's needs contact needs to feel safe. A baby should never cry, for instance. More, if they cry more than 10 seconds, it's a disaster, according to her. And I do agree. I mean, it's beautiful, beautiful what, she's, what, she, what she did. A summary. Okay. No, what we are leaving the linear, linear presentation to a mandalic presentation to the circle, to the spiral, to the spiral, to the mental map. We leave the flat thing like 2D, a board or a piece of paper that's 2D, it's flat for 3D's approach. Like use the ceiling, use the floor, like you can write on the floor. It's so nice to learn how to write on the floor with a piece of chalk or on the sand. Use the four walls. You can do some painting, for instance, inside the box, and you paint. It's called involvente. I don't know in English. Like it's all around you. It's a surrounding and, and environment. So you paint the on the above the ceiling, the sides of the box, and the below, and the, you are inside the painting. That's starting to work with a 3D approach and gives more synapses, more connection in the brain. Switch all the ugly sounds from the bell to the many sounds in um, the bad acoustics of the um, dining room where they eat for nice sounds as well. If you have, you have the chance to have loudspeaker around you, it's called uh, uh, surrounding sound and appreciate silence moment and silence places like you can have a silence room or do a walk in silence it's very pedagogical from being <clears throat> still and don't move for eight hours uh, uh, glue on a chair this is impossible now it has to be in movement 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 remember endorphin serotonin dopamine all that is to movement and motivation. From uh, dirty colors, like gray, brown, to vibrant colors, beautiful colors, and light from the sun, good lighting, or indirect light if you have to use artificial light. And um, from somebody who teach you all the time, Starts the self learning, self um, investigation, research, activities in group, team building, and the cooperative games. That's what the new education is made of. Now I want to finish with what we call the cone of learning. That is from Edgar Dahl, Dale. He said, You learn what well, he said after two weeks. You, we will remember only 10% of what we read, very little. And most of the education is still reading. This makes no sense. We remember 20% of what we hear, like uh, hear somebody. What we see it would be 30%, like uh, looking at the uh, pictures, um, big drawings, movies. 50% of what we hear and see. So an exhibit, a demonstration, do something, do the experiment yourself. What we say and participating in a description, giving a talk will be 70% and 90% would be what we both say and do, like theater, dramatic presentation, simulating a real experience, doing the real thing. 
90%. This is the education we want. I want. We do. The children are crying for, the young people they are dying for. And 100% when you can teach. So this is wonderful. It will replace the exam. If an older kid can teach the younger kid or even a kid to their peer of the same age, if they can teach something, you see, we divide like this, we sum up like this, we do like that, this math or this, whatever. They are good teachers between themselves. Actually, there is a, I saw a class in, in China. It was self-math. They were learning math between themselves. And there was a teacher in the corner just enjoying himself. And they were asking me something if they, they were stuck, but the teacher was not teaching the class. And they were flying with math. They were doing so good. It's called self-taught math. I, I love this class. So you remember something when you can teach. So if the kids can do an exam for the other kids, or if they can teach among themselves, or the other kids can read for the young kids. I mean, this is the most pedagogical things. And this is a long-term memory. And it's pure helping each other and cooperation. And that's the new education we do what? And... Of course, a lot of love. Love can help with everything. Even if you don't have the right techniques, if there's a lot of love, goodwill, um, care, attention, listening, it will always go well. And this is what we want to do with the Seven Peter School. We will see later. So thank you so much. And please take care. Remember, Shishida used to say, if you love your child, you are already teaching him or her. I repeat, this is so beautiful. Dr. Shishida from Japan said, if you love your child, you are already teaching him or her. And that the essence of education is the base of everything. Thank you so much. We see you at the next video. You take care. Thank you.